Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we're doing a very different video than anything I have done before. And that is we are going to be talking about doing a mock draft with only players that competed in the Senior Bowl. Lots of players boosted their draft stock in Mobile, Alabama this week as we got to see some of the nation's top talents. But what would a draft look like if we only had a pool of players that competed in the Senior Bowl? How would it shake things up? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you guys are interested in draft content, prospect spotlights, mock drafts, whatever you guys like in terms of draft content, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as we are getting closer to the end of April. We have a ton of new content coming. We've got some really fun ideas, uh, some nice guests that are going to be joining as well. So you don't want to miss it. Be sure to uh, hit that subscribe button. But Guys, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to start off with the Chicago Bears. Now, this also kind of will allow us to not only highlight players that we haven't already, but it's going to allow us to experiment with some different ideas that we haven't exactly talked about. So uh, the Chicago Bears are here at number one, and obviously in real life, the big talk is quarterback. Are you going to trade up for Caleb Williams? Are you going to trade back? Are you going to trade Justin Fields? What are you going to do? I'm not out of the quarterbacks that competed in Mobile. I don't think any of them are worthy of going to the Bears. I don't know if any of them are an immediate upgrade over Justin Fields. So I'm going to step away from that, and I'm going to look at the defensive side of the football a little bit. And after you got Montez Sweat, this was a defense that really, really improved. But I think you could go get him a running mate. And I think the best player in Mobile had a good week, maybe not a great week. We're going to take Liatu Latu here. Did what he needed to do. This is a guy who was very versatile, could play that 4-3 edge that Chicago runs, could play that 3-4 outside linebacker role, really good pass rusher, has a ton of different pass rush moves. He leverages himself really well, Has can combine pass rush moves. This is a guy I really like. He is my number one edge rusher in the class. I think he's going to be a superstar. And I think he helps this Bears defense. We move on to number two here with the Washington Commanders and they just hired Cliff Kingsbury. They're going to want to implement a new offense. I think that this is a quarterback spot. It's what quarterback do you like? Because we saw Spencer Rattler, who I think had an incredible week. Do I think he's worthy of going in this number one spot? Probably not. But there is a quarterback who I think has first-round potential, has the best arm of probably anybody in this draft class, elite ball placement, and... You know, he struggled a little bit in the national championship game, but this is a guy who I think has a ton of upside and I think could really be a upgrade for this commander's team. And that's going to be Michael Penix Jr. I know a lot of people aren't as high on Michael Penix Jr. as I am, but this is a guy I think has all the tools. He has a bit of an odd throwing motion, which I know some people are going to talk about. Not amazing athlete, but this is a guy who has some of the best ball placement, incredibly accurate with the football. I think he has a chance to be a real star in the NFL. Next up, we have the New England Patriots on the clock. Again, I think this is a quarterback, and you can kind of take your pick. Spencer Rattler is a guy that I think has some potential to be in this spot, but I don't think I'm going to go with Spencer Rattler. I'm going to go with Bo Nix. I think just a higher floor player, um, a guy that I think can go in, be a starter, has more, more starting experience than any player in NCAA history. Yes, he's an older prospect. Yes, a lot of people are going to talk about the short screens and the short passes, but I think he has that arm that he could throw the ball downfield. He's got really good athleticism, could throw the ball on the run. And with a new head coach, I think you've got to go get yourself a new starting franchise quarterback. I think Bo Nix can be that guy. You could talk yourselves into Spencer Rattler. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't know if Rattler is a first rounder, even in this mock. Uh, we might see him down the line, but I do have some questions still about Rattler. Um, and we'll see what he can do. And number four, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Defensive tackle, you could look at Tavondre Sweat is an absolute animal here. You could also look in that secondary or the wide receiver room. This isn't exactly a wide receiver group that I'm head over heels for, where I have to take one inside the top five, but there is a corner here that I think is well worth taking. I'm going to take Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Um, if you guys saw our uh, senior bowl winners and losers, me, the mock draft guy, Ian Cummings. If you haven't seen it, go check that one out. But we talked about Quinion Mitchell and he answered all the questions we wanted to see played in a primarily off man zone scheme at Toledo. And they were using him in that press man role. And he excelled. He looked very, very comfortable all week long. I was really, really impressed with what he did. I think he had some of the best ball skills 
of anyone, had some nice interceptions. I think Quinion Mitchell has a very real chance to finish as a top cornerback on my board. He's fast. He has incredible instincts, really good ball skills. I think Arizona, a team that doesn't exactly have a stud corner, they get that need here in Quinion Mitchell. The Chargers, in real life, it's going to be tackle Brock Bowers or Malik Neighbors slash Roma Dunze, whoever you have above that. I tend to lean Odunze. So it's going to be a tackle here. Uh, Talise Fuaga was an absolute animal all week long in Mobile. Didn't even play the last two days. He was that good. He didn't even need to play. He didn't need to prove anything else. He started off his week really good against Lyle Tulatu, who we had as the number one overall pick. And his week just continued. He's super athletic. He's got really good run blocking skills, but he has shown his upside as a pass blocker. Really good footwork. Uh, he another guy that I wouldn't be totally surprised if he's the top tackle off the board. Tulise Fuaga is an absolute monster. I thought he did an incredible job this week in Mobile. The Giants at six. Now, this is a spot where you could talk yourselves into Spencer Rattler, and I'm trying to see here if that is a route I want to go. I'm kind of looking uh, to the board where I originally kind of mapped out my ideas, and I think Rattler has a real shot to be in this conversation. Good arm, mobile, uh, you know, he's pretty accurate for the most part. Had some interception concerns that would pop up from time to time. But overall, I think he is a talented player. Do I want to go down that route is the question mark. And I think I am. I think I'm going to go with Spencer Rattler. Um, another guy who I think brings a lot of experience to the table for a quarterback needy team like the New York Giants, I think Spencer Rattler has a chance to sneak into round two and could be in play for the Giants with their second round pick in real life. Uh, Rattler, good arm strength, had a really rough go in Oklahoma, which I think a lot of people really like to crap on the guy for. But since then, he has really turned his career around, made a name for himself. I'm really impressed with what he did. I really like what he could bring to the table. Um, at the very least, he's competition for Daniel Jones in the early on, can maybe be your starter down the road. Um, has a bit of Baker Mayfield to him, just an underdog that everyone's counting out. I'm rooting for Spencer Rattler. I think he is going to sneak in here and be a really nice piece here. The Tennessee Titans, now originally, I went with Tyler Guyton when I mapped out my ideas, and it's still a route where I might go. Um, Guyton had an incredible week. I think he could play that left tackle or that right tackle role. Um, you've also got Jackson Powers Johnson here, who I think is an absolute monster and could also be in play here. Um, I'm going to take Jackson Powers Johnson over Tyler Guyton. I, I like Guyton. I, I like what he can bring to the table. But Jackson Powers Johnson, he could play center. He could play guard. Both positions that the Titans desperately need to upgrade in. We talked about it. This is an offensive line that outside of Peter Skaronsky, Really, really not that great. This is a team that you have your guy, presumably at quarterback and Will Levis. Go find your long-term uh, starting offensive line. I think Jackson Powers Johnson, probably the best player uh, in the entire week. Um, center, maybe not the most valuable position. Can swing out to guard, but this is a guy who I think has elite upside. Stay tuned on the channel. We will be doing a prospect spotlight on him coming later this week. Atlanta at number eight. Really interesting spot here. Um, I, I really like the idea of adding an edge rusher, the receivers that, you know, that we could kind of pick from it's Xavier Leggett, Tez Walker. You've got guys like, um, Lad McConkey, you know, interesting players, but I just don't think that that's in play quarterbacks. I'm not taking Michael Pratt. I'm not definitely not taking Sam Hartman. So we're going to go with the next need. Um, you've got solid pieces, Calais Campbell getting up there in age, Grady Jarrett coming off an injury. What are you going to do on that defensive line? I got just the guy who I think could be an excellent fit for this team. We are going to take Darius Robinson out of Missouri. Here he is. They've got him at 58 on the board. Moved up, was at 101 earlier. But this is a guy who I think has some elite upside. Has the size of Cam Jordan. Could be a Danico Autry, Cam Jordan, J.J. Watt type of player. This guy is quick off the line of scrimmage. He's got great hands. An incredible swim move. And his line versatility makes him intriguing. He could play that edge role that we've seen Grady Jarrett play for the last decade for the Falcons in their 3-4 scheme. He could play a edge rusher in a 4-3. This guy could play anywhere on your defensive line. He's a chess piece for your team. And he is flying up draft boards after an incredible week, dominated in Mobile, really, really liked what he had to show. And I think he could be an excellent addition to a Falcons team that is looking for some defensive line help. 
Then we get the Chicago Bears. Now everything is kind of moving down my board. Uh, you took Layatu Latu earlier. Now I think I am going to go with a wide receiver. I know for the Falcons, I didn't love the receiver options, but this is a team that I don't think needs a number one. If you're not in the market for a number one, I know a lot of people don't really love his week, but he got better as the week went along. I'm taking Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. Route running is a concern. Obviously, he measured in with smaller hands and a smaller frame than people were anticipating. But I thought he had a pretty good week, especially towards that day three, was showing some nice contested catch abilities. I think his route running uh, is better than people are giving it credit for. I don't think he has this liability as a route runner. I think he's got some solid upside there, but I think Xavier Leggett has some really, really nice potential still to be an A.J. Brown type player. He's physical. He's a really good contested catch getter. And he is fast. And you put him with Justin Fields, and DJ Moore, you got Darnell Mooney in the slot. This offense just got that much harder to guard. I think Leggett compliments DJ Moore really well also. I think this is a really good situation for him, and I've got him going 9 to Chicago. At 10, we know the Jets need a tackle. I'm not overthinking this. Give me Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Guy who I think could play left tackle or right tackle. He played right tackle for a left-handed quarterback. So he's protecting the blind side of a left-handed quarterback, which is the left tackle for a right-handed quarterback. I know that was a complicated way of saying it, but there's a guy I think you could put on either side of the offensive line, and he's got a real opportunity to thrive and be a nice piece long-term for you. I think he's got some nice upside. I think he's a good player. I'm going to take Tyler Guyton here at number 10. And number 11 for the Minnesota Vikings, another edge rusher who I didn't think had like an elite week by any means. I thought he had a good week, uh, but with Daniel Hunter, a free agent, you're going to need to make some changes there. And I'm going to take Chris Braswell out of Alabama. This is a guy who I could see potentially sneaking into the first round like we saw Felix Anadike Uzama do last year. Really good athlete, quick off the line, good run defender. And, you know, he had a really good season. I like what Braswell can bring to the table. He's athletic, and he could be that Daniel Hunter replacement, playing that outside linebacker role in that cover seven that Alabama runs. I think he could be a really nice piece for this offense. The Broncos at number 12, very interesting spot here. I, I'm going to go BPA because corner, do I want to take a corner? Not necessarily. Adisa Isaac could be in the running here. Don't want to go there. I'm going to take a guy on the interior of this defensive line. One of my favorite players in the draft is Tavondre Sweat. Absolute menace on this defensive line. He could go higher. I think he is one of the better players here. The problem, position. Playing that nose tackle position, and it's not going to be heavily valued. He could slip a little bit in the board, but this guy is an absolute monster. He provides some pass rush upside. Yes, his lateral quickness might not be the greatest of anyone in this class, but I still have him ranked ahead of his teammate, Byron Murphy, which I know is crazy to a lot of people because I think Murphy offers more as a pass rusher. He might translate to more defensive schemes, but I think Tavondre Sweat, what he can do in that run game, you can't run the football on this guy, and I think Denver – a team that defensively I think needs to improve just about everywhere. Go get the best player on the board, which in my opinion is going to be Tavondre Sweat. The Vegas Raiders are on the clock here. A few different ways that I could see them going. I am going to take um, another guy that I kind of like to this team. It's Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. A guy who I don't think had the strongest week. I thought he was, you know, kind of that middle of the pack. Didn't really boost his stock, but I don't think he hurt it necessarily either. Um, a tackle that I like though, I think he could swing in the guard. He reminds me a lot of Tyler Smith, who we saw go in the first round of Dallas a few years ago was a tackle at Tulsa. They swinged him into guard and he was, he's been absolutely fantastic. Been one of the best guards in football, a Raiders team that I think you could play Jordan Morgan at that right tackle spot. You could move him into one of your guard spots, wherever you see fit. He's a plug and play guy who I think could play anywhere on your offensive line. And I think that is a very valuable thing to have in the NFL. So I'm going to take Jordan Morgan here. And we'll figure out where we're going to put him kind of once we got our team in order. Then we got the New Orleans Saints here. Uh, I'm going to take a safety, top safety on the board to me is Cam Kinchins. And believe it or not, he was in Mobile. Kinchins, another guy, didn't have a great week, measured in smaller than we would have anticipated. But this guy has some elite speed to him, closes on the football really fast. He wants to take your head off when you are making a tackle here. I think Cam Kinchins... Maybe not the strongest week. Doesn't really change anything for me. Still the top safety on my board. Saints, you're going to need to find your long-term solutions at safety. You got Marcus Williams, who left for free agency. You've got guys like Tyron Matthew, who's 
time's coming up soon. So you're going to need to figure out where you want to go long-term here. But I think Cam Kitchens can figure out what to do with them, play him in the slot potentially, but I think there's a good situation for him in New Orleans. The uh, Indianapolis Colts here at number 15, bunch of different ways you could go. Edge is in play if you want Adisa Isaac, a really good run defender. I feel like you kind of have that in Quiddy Pay, though. Kind of that project edge rusher. You could look Marshawn Nealon's a guy that I like quite a bit as well. Don't think I'm going to go that direction. The receivers are where I'm leaning. Tez, Tez Walker, really good vertical threat. Another guy that I think you kind of have that in Alec Pierce. I don't know if that's going to really change my mind. Tez Walker, Roman Wilson is in play here as well. Lad McConkey, Ricky Parasol. Ricky Parasol is a guy that Colt Twitter has been talking about. Had really good chemistry with Anthony Richardson. Had a really good week. Showed some contested catchability. I think he could be a solid receiver for this team. And you're looking for that number two here. Where I'm going to go, I think I'm going to take Lad. I'm going to take Lad McConkey. I think this guy just separates. He's going to always be open, and that's what you need. You need a guy that's going to be a safety blanket for your potentially superstar quarterback. Go get him another weapon here, a guy who can run routes, has good speed down the field, can win deep. You can use him in a lot of unique ways in this Shane Steichen offense. I think he could be a huge addition for this team and be a much-needed one at that. Then we got the Seattle Seahawks here. I'm not going to overthink this pick. This is a pick that I really, really like for this team. And I am going to take... Christian Haynes out of UConn. I really, really like Christian Haynes. I think he is going to be a second round pick, a guy that has really good athleticism. Another guy who was an honorable mention for us, had a really solid week, I felt like. Uh, Blocks really well, a good athlete, could play that right guard spot for this team, which is a hole for them. They need to shore up the interior of this offensive line. I think Christian Haynes helps this team do that long term. So I'm going to make that move. I'm going to make the call. I'm going to bring Christian Haynes to Seattle. Then we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, originally I went corner here looking at the receivers still on the board. Don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take Tez Walker here, a guy that I don't think had the strongest week, but this guy has really, really elite speed and his route running, maybe not amazing. The separation was not great this week, but if you put him in this vertical scheme, you can scheme this guy open. He could be that Calvin Ridley type of player for this team that can win down the field with his speed. I think this is the kind of player Trevor Lawrence needs. Just throw him the ball. He's going to win deep. I think Tez Walker is like a mid, like a round pick. I don't think he's a superstar, but I think he could be a nice addition to this team, a team that's looking long-term to find a solution. So I am going to take Tez Walker here to Jacksonville. For the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm going to go with Kingsley Suomataea out of BYU. Really interesting player. Uh, Played right tackle last year for BYU, played left tackle this year, and then played guard at the Senior Bowl. I like that for him. I like that he could play either side of the offensive line, inside, outside. You really, really like that from this guy. Another superb athlete at the position who is just going to be a guy that helps in the run game. You've just got to be able to protect Joe Burrow, and that's something that, unfortunately, they haven't been able to do. I think Kingsley Suomatea adds some extra layer of protection for Joe Burrow, and hopefully you can keep him healthy for a full season. At number 19, we've got the Los Angeles Rams, and another team that I really struggled to kind of figure out where I wanted to go here, but I'm going to go with a corner for this team. Um, Some solid corners, but I think my top corner that was in Mobile is going to be down the board here at number 112, and that is Kyrie Jackson. Excellent size. I thought he had a solid week. Again, not a great week from him. Uh, Incredible size at the position. I believe he's about 6'2", has incredibly long arms. Uh, Really hard to throw the ball against. And I think this team is looking for that number one corner. I think Kyrie Jackson could be that. Moves down the field incredibly well. Fluid hips. Does get beat a little bit on double moves, but this guy has all the potential in the world if he can get his tools all together. And I think he has some incredible potential. So I'm going to take Kyrie Jackson. Now at number 20, This is kind of a cheat uh, a little bit. Zach Frazier was invited to the Senior Bowl, did the weigh-ins, did not play because he was recovering from a leg injury. He is going to be my pick here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a guy that I am a huge fan of and what he can bring to the table. Athletic, Athletically, he checks all the boxes. He gets to that second level really well. He has powerful hands. I believe he had 10-inch hands 
which I thought was some of the best measurements. Long arm for the position, and he's just powerful. And that's what you like from your centers. The Steelers just need some help on this interior, plain and simple. Um, you made some moves. You got Isaac Siamalu. They still need a long-term center option. I think Zach Frazier is – he's the number two center behind Jackson Powers Johnson, but he's really close to that top center for me. I really like what Frazier does. I think he could be a really good player in the league, so I'm going to take Zach Frazier. Uh, next up, we got the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to take another offensive tackle here. Give me Patrick Paul out of Houston. I think this is the perfect situation for Paul. Uh, let me preface by saying that. Patrick Paul is a guy that I think plays – with really good hands, um, good pass blocker. And this is a team that wants to pass the ball. They don't run the ball a ton. You've got to be able to protect Tua. I think this could be your starting left tackle. He just is really powerful. He's big. I believe he's 6'7", 330 pounds, big, powerful hand, blocks, clears out lanes for – I mean, he's he, you can't move the guy. He's a brick wall, basically. And I think Patrick Paul fits exactly what this Dolphins team wants to do. I think that's a huge bonus for a team that needs to be able to protect Tua. The Philadelphia Eagles are a team that you could look corner. You really could. You could look edge um, slash D-line. I really like the idea of Brandon Dorless here. Can be that Brandon Graham replacement long term. Uh, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go with a linebacker because I think their linebacker is that bad. Um, I'm going to take Peyton Wilson here. Peyton Wilson, I think, is the best linebacker that was at Mobile. He's got an injury history to him, which I think is something that we're going to have to monitor as time goes on. How are the injuries going to affect him? But this is a guy who I think has really, really high upside when he's healthy. This guy's a freak athlete. I believe he ran like four, like a 4-2 on one play against Notre Dame. I could be wrong on that, but the next-gen stats on it were insane. Really powerful hitter. Good in coverage. I think he's got a lot of tools that you like to see. I think he is right up there with Edgerin Cooper and Jeremiah Trotter for that top linebacker spot in real life. You get that guy at 22, I think you've got a real chance to be a threat again in the NFC because their linebackers were picked apart come playoff time, and I think they're going to need to make a move there. Then we've got the Houston Texans here. Receiver could be in play yet again for this team, but with – um, Brandon Doyle is still on the board. I think I'm going to go that direction. Could play that edge role for this team, I think, but I think he could also be an interior presence here. Adds an extra layer of pass rush to this defensive line that they could be a real threat to mess with. And I don't think anybody would want to mess with this team. He, They could really do a lot of different things with him. Will Anderson Jr., Christian Harris, Brandon Dorless. Sign me up for that. Uh, not as a Colts fan, don't sign me up for that. But I think that could be a really good situation for Dorless to fall into uh, with a great defensive coach in D'Amico Ryan. So I like that situation for him. The Dallas Cowboys here, this was a really simple pick for me. You've got a Tyron Smith as a free agent. Let's go get a guy who I think could play almost anywhere for me. And that is going to be Dominic Puny out of Kansas. A guy who I'm going to be doing a video on Probably on Wednesday, really like Puny. I think this guy has really good upside. Really athletic, played left guard, played left tackle this past year at Kansas. Really, really good at both positions. I think he probably could translate better to the guard spot, which if you want to move him to guard, move Tyler Smith back out to tackle. If you want to play Puny at tackle, you have some options now that you can mess around with because you've got two such versatile players at the position I really like this situation for him. I thought Puny was really, really good this week. Showed some, got beat once by Gabe Hall, who didn't. Um, and then he really just learned from his mistakes and kept it going for the rest of the week. I thought Dominic Puny was fantastic this week in Mobile. Really boosted his stock. Could be a potential second round pick now for me. Um, and I think he was a really nice piece for a Dallas team that can kind of figure out where they want to go with him from there. And then we're going to go. Back to the secondary here with the Green Bay Packers. And there's a few options here. Kalen King had a really bad week. You could still talk me into him to, at this spot. Uh, because in terms of upside, I think Kalen King has some of the higher upside in this class. Chris Abrams, Drain, another guy who I think could be a really nice piece. Pair him alongside Jair Alexander. If you want to play him in zone, this is your guy. A really good zone corner. I thought Max Melton, really good player as well, who... Quick can be that slot corner for you. Cam Hart had a really good week. Chow Smith-Wade had a good week. 
Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see. Andrew Phillips had a good week. Um, yeah, lots of players had good weeks. I'm going to go with Chris Abrams drain though. I think uh, Kalen King is not going to be making an appearance in this video. Just so you guys know, um, Chris Abrams drains a guy I've liked since last year, really good off man corner. Uh, the press man guy is going to be in his rake straw, great tackler, but Chris Abrams drain is a really good corner. I think he's got really good speed, great ball hawking abilities. And on top of that, an incredible zone guy. I think you could play him in zone. He's got quick reactive instincts. I think he's a guy that you can kind of move around in a lot of different ways. I think Green Bay is going to be a much better spot with a guy like Chris James Drain. You can play on the outside. You can play in the slot. I think you've got some nice options with him. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, an edge rusher is what I'm thinking. I'm between an edge rusher and a corner. I am going to go with an edge. I'm going to take Adisa Isaac here. A guy who is a really, really good run defender. I think he's very similar to Yaya Diaby in terms of just a power rusher. Uh, still kind of piecing everything together as a pass rusher, but I think the upside is definitely there. Penn State, great history of good edge rushers. I think Adisa Isaac could be in the running to be another one. And then we got the Arizona Cardinals. Wide receiver, likely where we're going to go. You could look at the edge rushers, and Marshawn Neeland is on the board. Austin Booker's on the board. D lineman, you want to shore up the interior here. I like the idea of Michael Hall as well. Um, just a powerful player uh, who really showed some really good athleticism as well. But I'm going to go get a receiver for this team. And I'm going to take Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. I think this guy, I don't know how high of a ceiling he's got, but I think this is a guy who's just going to catch 60, 70, 80 catches in his rookie season. I think he's going to be reliable. He doesn't drop passes, which I think is a huge thing for them. You've got to be able to hold on to the football. I think now you've got a guy, you can kind of figure out this receiver rotation is Michael Wilson, Ricky Parasol. I don't think any of these guys are number one options, but I think they can all be, I have the upside. I think Michael Wilson has number one upside. I've said that for a couple of years, but Parasol, I think it'd be a really solid option here. Uh, just another reliable piece to put in this Arizona offense. Uh, you can figure out what to do with them. Another another fun gadget player for um, Jonathan Gannon uh, to work with. Uh, then we've got the Buffalo Bills. Another team, I'm going to go receiver here. Uh, give me Roman Wilson. Uh, just imagining this guy running routes for Josh Allen. Super speedy down the field. You could play him in the slot similar to that Gabe Davis role. He's not as physical as Gabe Davis, but there's a lot of question marks. Gabe Davis, free agent, Stefan Diggs, future in question again, where is this team going to go long-term? I think go get Roman Wilson, guy who can run routes incredibly well, super fast, shifty, good hands. I think it's the right piece for Buffalo. The Detroit Lions here at number 29. Uh, I, I wanna, I'm want i between a couple guys here. Um, you could go corner for me. You could also go on this interior defensive line, and I think that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Michael Hall out of Ohio State. A guy who I've never not been the highest on, but he had an incredible week for uh, in Mobile. Just showed some incredible power, really good athleticism, a quick step off the line of scrimmage. And he showed a lot of the things that we knew he had, but we weren't sure how he was going to piece it all together. And he answered those questions. I thought he had a really impressive week, put together a nice show. I think he's done enough to earn himself a first round pick in this mock. And we're going to go to the cornerback room for the Baltimore Ravens. And I am going to take uh, Max Melton, another guy who I thought was really, really good this week, um, flying all over the field. I believe he had one of the fastest times of anybody in the entire class. But on top of that, I just thought that he was physical, matched up with receivers really well. I still think he's a raw piece, but you put him in Baltimore with some solid pieces in that secondary, Kyle Hamilton and Marlon Humphrey when he's on the field. You've got some options there. He's not going to be the number one. I think he's got some upside to develop into a really good stud. So I'm going to take him here at 30. Number 31, the Kansas City Chiefs give me a wide receiver. You go Brendan Rice, wouldn't hate it. You go Jamari Thrash, I'd love it. Javon Baker's great. Um, this one's a no-brainer to me, though. It's Malachi Corley, the Yak King. We've seen how these Chiefs love their yards after the catch. Malachi Corley's the guy. I mean, he can... Get in the ball on a screen, he could take it to the house. All the upside in the world here with Malachi Corley. That's a no-brainer pick for me. I'm taking him. And then with my final pick here at number 32, 
There are, I'm trying to see, there are a few options I could go with. Uh, you got Braden Fisk out of Florida State. Don't really think he fit this team necessarily well. You've also got uh, Marshawn Neeland. I think that's where we're going to go. Chase Young hasn't exactly been the player that we thought this team was going to be getting. Uh, let's go get Marshawn Neeland. I think fits this scheme pretty well. Good pass rusher, could defend the run a little bit, and I think he plays really hard, which is something Chase Young has not done. So a little bit of a fun sort of experimental video. I'm very curious to see what your guys' response to this is going to be. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let me know which picks you guys liked, which picks you didn't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.